In this video, we're going to go over how to place a central line in the internal jugular vein using ultrasound guidance. For this line, this is really one where you could use your anatomical landmarks like we've done traditionally, but because there's some variation in terms of where the internal jugular vein lies in relation to the carotid artery, it's really best to visualize that directly with ultrasound before placing the line and during line placement. Traditionally, the carotid artery runs medial to the internal jugular vein in the neck, but because of that variation is sometimes posterior, sometimes they're very close together, you're gonna improve your outcome in terms of not cannulating or hitting the carotid artery by using your ultrasound guidance. The other thing I wanna point out in this video is this is a sterile procedure, right? So classically, if I was doing this in the ER, I'd be wearing a head bonnet, a mask, sterile gloves, and a gown. Also, because we're gonna be using ultrasound, I would be using a sterile sleeve for my ultrasound guidance. You're gonna uh, prep and drape the patient as if it's a completely sterile procedure. We're not gonna do that in this video just for, for, to make it easier for you to see what's actually going on, but that's a big point in terms of all central lines, always a sterile procedure. So before we start, I'll have the patient lying supine. I'll be at the head of the bed. I'll always usually go for the right internal jugular vein first because it's easier for me. I'm right hand dominant. And if you think about it, that's a nice straight shot into the right side of the heart. Um, when I have my ultrasound, I'd like to put it here so I can look and watch as I'm doing the procedure. And I'll usually have my kit here on the side. Before I start, I like to have the patient, again, supine. I'll turn their head away from the side. I'm going about 30, no more than 40 degrees away. And I'll just look, right? I'll look to see, hey, where is my vein in relation to my artery? So I have an idea of where I need to start, where I'll need to prep. And so when you're looking with your ultrasound, you can see, all right, there's two vessels here, right? The proximal one and a distal one. So in this case, you have the vein and the artery really running together as opposed to medial and lateral. So how do you figure out which one's the vein and which one's the artery? Well, remember that the vein is compressible and the artery below here is non-compressible and usually it's gonna be more pulsatile. It's not pulsa uh, pulsatile in this because this is a model, but in the human, uh, you would see basically compressible vein on the top and pulsatile artery underneath it. So when I'm looking here, basically I'm gonna see, look, this is where I have a nice correlation of that vein. And so I'm gonna wanna prep this area. And when I'm approaching this, it runs, you know, if you're doing your landmarks, you'd be going to the ipsilateral nipple. So I'm gonna be doing this approach to get it to go into the direction that I want. So I'll put my probe aside and let's just walk through what we have in this kit. So this is a sterile kit. You're gonna open it up. The first thing you're gonna see is chlorohexidine so that you can prep the patient. You break your chlorohexidine and what I do is I do a nice wide prep starting from where I'm gonna be inserting and going outward. And you really just wanna do a real big area of prep here so that you have room to play with and it's a real nice sterile field. The next thing you're gonna do when you open up your kit is you're gonna steal this sterile drape. This whole kit here is sterile. And in this drape, you're gonna basically have a hole in terms of where you're gonna be placing your line. So what I'll do is I'll lay that out and I'll leave that area that I've already demarcated because I've looked at it with my ultrasound right underneath that area. Now you have a nice, open, sterile field. The next step I'll do is open up this lidocaine for your local anesthesia. And I'll walk you through each part of this kit. This is some gauze. I usually put it there so it's easily accessible. Get your small syringe with the large bore needle so that you can draw up your anesthesia. There's another small needle in here that allows you to actually give the anesthesia. It's a 27 gauge long. And at this point, I'll have an assistant help me make my ultrasound 
sterile, right? So you can take now your ultrasound, it's in a sterile sleeve on your sterile field, and you can look in real time at what is it that you're going for. And I'll start right off with the anesthesia to remind me again, hey, I wanna be in the right spot here. So when I'm looking, I see, okay, this is the course of my vein that I'm going for, the internal jugular vein. And so I'll hold my ultrasound with my left hand and I'll just do my skin wheel right here in the course that I'm gonna go with my finder needle. And you can actually see your needle on that screen. You see I'm a little lateral there, so what I'll do is I'll readjust my needle and bring it, and you see me tapping on that vein. That's how you know I'm right there. That's the tip of my needle that you're seeing. And so I don't anesthetize into the vein, but I just go right above it and anesthetize that entire track. The part that really hurts is gonna be when you break through the skin, so that's really the area that I focus on in terms of anesthesia. You wanna warn your patient, obviously saying, hey, you're gonna feel a sting and a burn. The other thing that I'm gonna be doing in this video that you should not be doing is I'm gonna be recapping my sharps. This is you know, not our live uh, patient. If this is a live patient, you do wanna protect yourself. So what you wanna do is put your needles to kind of hold in this needle holder as opposed to recapping, and that's a big no-no. So now that they're being anesthetized, let's walk through the kit. This is a guide wire right here, right? This is a J wire, has that J wire tip. And what I'm gonna be doing with this is this is what you're gonna be using for your Selinger technique in terms of getting that into the patient. And so it has a guiding tip so you can just drive it right in there. I usually like to put my guide wire right up here so it's close to me, I know where, I, where I'm at. This is the triple lumen line that you'll be using, realizing that the most distal, point, distal port is the one that your guide wire is gonna come through. It's labeled distal, it's typically brown, it depends on the kit. But each one of these lines needs to be uh, flushed with normal saline, sterile normal saline, and then capped except for the distal port where your guide wire is gonna come out. What I have here is some normal saline that I've pre-put in there. It usually comes in one of those syringes that says that's sterile, but you don't wanna put that whole syringe there. You just have someone pour and uh, inject that normal saline into this little pool that you have here, this reservoir. So what I'll do is I'll flush each one of these lines, make sure they're clear. And as I flush them, I'll cap them. Flushing the blue one. Normal saline's coming out. Cap that one. And the distal port, the brown one, I'll flush it by, I will not cap it because your guide wire will not come out. You're gonna need this once you have that line in, so I hold it right here onto the side. So once you have your triple lumen flushed, you kinda wanna go over the rest of the things in the kit. This is gonna be a scalpel that you're gonna use to cut into the skin after you put your needle in so that you can actually dilate it and run that wire through. This is gonna be a suture as well as a clip that's gonna allow you to suture and hold your triple lumen to the skin. We'll do that at the end. And if you look at this, there's a lot of different needles in here. Let's go through those first. These plastic ones here are dilators. We're gonna use the longer dilator. You can use a shorter one if the vessel's superficial, but just the longer dilator. I'll put this here so I know where it is. And then when you look at these needles, there's two different kinds. This one's gonna be your introducer needle. This is the needle that you're gonna to use to actually find the vessel and then run your guide wire through. And this is just kind of a long angiocath that you could use if you're actually gonna just cannulate um, the internal jugular or the external jugular vein with a long angiocath. We're not really gonna be using this, so I'm gonna put this to the side with that smaller uh, dilator. So when I have my needle, this is gonna be, again, my Selinger Technique finder needle. I'll flush it a little bit here with some normal saline, and this is gonna be my basic setup. So I'm gonna have this needle, my guide wire, my dilator, my triple lumen, the suture stuff I'll save for later. If you need to put this down, again, you can always pop it right into your needle holder and go from there. So now that we're kind of set up and I know what I'm looking for, I'm gonna take my ultrasound, I'm gonna move this guide wire to the lower end of my sterile field, and I'm gonna take my finder needle, right? And what we do here is the exact same thing that we just did. You're gonna find on your ultrasound, looking where you're at again, uh, in terms of where the vein is, making sure again it's the vein by making sure it collapses when you put pressure on it, and you wanna center it. And what I'll do is you can see on your ultrasound, you can find your center, and you're putting this needle not right 
where the ultrasound probe is, you're actually gonna be going 45 degrees, again, looking towards the ipsilateral nipple, and you introduce it here about two centimeters away from the ultrasound probe, because that's about how far, uh, that's how deep my vessel is. So now I can see my tip as I'm approaching. Once you break the skin, you wanna be pulling back on your syringe so that you know you're in the vessel when you have that flash. And I'll just follow, you can follow your needle until it goes into the vessel. Again, I'm a little lateral on that, so what I'm gonna do is redirect until I'm right on top of it. You can see, you can look for the tip, and as I enter it, you see now you're in the vein. You see that blue blood? That's the vein. If it was red, it would be the carotid artery. Now that I'm in there, I'm gonna stabilize my needle with my hand. I'm gonna remove the syringe. I'll cap that needle so I don't introduce any air. And this is the part that you now will run your guide wire into the vessel. And it should go very easily. You put this blue introducer in and then you just take your wire and you run it and it should be smooth. If you have any resistance, stop. Do not force this wire. It should be a very, very smooth movement. If say you do have resistance, what you wanna do is stop, pull it back a little bit, maybe rotate your needle about 45 degrees and try again. Sometimes the J wires, they'll get stuck on the back end of the vessel or they'll get caught up on something. So you just wanna do a little bit of rotation. If you're still having difficulty, stop again, pull back, recheck with your ultrasound to see that you're in the vessel and then try to proceed again. So you're never, never forcing this. So once you threaded your wire in there, you can remove the introducer holding on to your guide wire with your left hand. We'll put that to the side. And you need to now remove that needle. So what I'm gonna do is remove the needle while controlling the guide wire, and then I'll grab the guide wire with my left hand as I'm removing that needle. Put the needle to the side. You're gonna grab your scalpel from your kit. You're gonna open up your scalpel, make a nick at the skin big enough to introduce your dilator and your sheath. Remove it, put that in the sharp, and now you're ready to run your dilator using the Selinger technique over this guide wire. I'll grab my dilator, right? This is the longer dilator. And this is where the Selinger technique is coming in. So you take your guide wire, you put it through your dilator, holding onto that wire. And now, once you get close to the skin, you want to hold it close, not way out here. You'll just bend the whole thing. And you twist as you introduce that into the vessel. You're dilating that vessel. Once you've dilated, you pull it out, keeping control of your guide wire. Pull out your dilator. And now, you're ready to put your central line in here. And this is gonna be the same thing, the same Selinger technique, where you now place the tip of your central line through this wire. It's almost like threading a needle. And you watch this wire come through. You never want to lose that wire without it sticking out the distal port, remember that? So here, you see this on my brown port labeled distal? It's come through now. Now I can safely grab that wire and hold this central line and I'll advance that central line as I hold my wire through the part that I've dilated, and it should go nice and easy and slip in, okay? And now I'm in the vessel. Your guide wire, control it with your hand. You're gonna pull that out, place it over here, and you wanna confirm that you are actually in the vein. And the way you do that is you're gonna pull back on that distal port, and you see there's the blue blood coming through, and so then you can flush it. Hold it, cap it, and you can do the exact same thing with all your other ports, right? Pull back, look for the blue blood, and flush it, recap it, and I'll do that for each one. Pull back, See the blood, flush it so it doesn't clot. That's why you wanna reflush it. Cap it, and your line's in. 
The next step is to secure this line. And there's a couple ways to do this. The first one is you could just suture it right here into the skin. The other one is you wanna realize, look, I have a certain length on this central line and I'm going from the internal jugular to, you know, right before the heart, the right atrium. And so I don't need to, you don't need to always hub it. You wanna kind of look before in terms of, well, how long is this and how far do I need to go? So if I make that math, right, and I didn't do it previously, I apologize, but if I did that math and I need about this much line in it, you can pull back to that, uh, this spot here, and this is where you're going to use your clamp. So this little clamp here would go around. You put the first rubber piece around the central line. It completely uh, embraces it. And then this last clamp locks it into place. You take this clamp and you just push it on and now you've locked that and so you can secure this closer to the skin if you need to. So this allows you to kind of uh, manage the length of your line and where it's secured because you're going to want to secure the line right where it enters the skin. You don't want to secure it way out here and then have this line that can creep out. There are some kits that will actually have two staples where you can just staple this in if you'd like. Um, this one has a suture kit, has a straight needle suture. The other thing that this kit doesn't have but other kits may have or you may want to add is going to be a uh, antibiotic patch. It's a round patch that would go right below this line uh, that will put helps decrease the rate of infection. In terms of suturing this, you just want to do your straightforward simple suture. Realizing this is a sharp needle, it's straight, so it's sometimes a little awkward. What I'll do is, this is the sharp end, this is the blunt end. I will take the blunt end, run it through where I want to suture, pull that needle out, and now I'm already through here, right? And so all you have to do at this point is make your nick in your skin, making sure not to stick yourself, Grab your two ends, and then you'll just make your, your basic surgeon's knot, your square knot. I usually put about four knots in there. You don't need to go so tight that you cause necrosis on the skin. but you do want to have it tight enough that it's at least, it's not tenting away from the skin. All right, so that's one side. What I'll do at this point is I'll grab my scalpel, I'll cut that suture, and you want to repeat that exactly on the other side. Now your line is secured. What you'll do at this point is, these are four by fours you can use if you've got blood coming out to clean up the area. You're going to remove your sterile fields. I would have sutured this other side, but we're, for the sake of time, we're not going to do that. And then you're going to place a bandage over this, typically a tegaderm, a clear see-through that you can see. And now you've got a good line that's secured with sutured, bandaged, and ready to roll with these ports on the outside. Triple lumen. You could put in multiple medications, pressors, IV fluids uh, going right into the internal jugular vein.